Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll skip the introductions and thanks because we've gone through that. Uh, and, I, and I think we should, uh, I'll try to keep it short and uh, also uh, in the spirit of what we were talking about this morning. I think we could have a more informal uh, session. So if you want to jump right in, uh, ask questions, make comments, because I think the, uh, I agree with Diana that the idea of a formal presentation is not what our objective is. Uh, besides, this is not a formal paper, it, it, it is a sketch. So uh, I, I think it just fits that we, uh, we can work it this way. So uh, the title of my presentation is uh, Autoethnography and Collaboration. And uh, uh, I think I could begin by explaining a little bit how I get to this. Uh, I, uh, you, you have been uh, probably hearing me for a while in, in different events. Uh, and I think it's the first time you're going to, to, to hear me talk about this. Uh, so a little bit of context. Uh, so if we think about uh, where we are today, uh, uh, at the beginning of this year, I, I, I finished my PhD thesis. So we are right at that point. Uh, and uh, up to that point, and up, up to date, uh, I I've been working with English teacher education, uh, with uh, pre-service and in-service teachers, uh, teaching literature as critical literacy, and that's the, those things are part of what my, my thesis uh, uh, is about, mostly what it is about. And uh, uh, while uh, that work has been connected to Projeto Nacional uh, in, in Brazil, uh, also to our uh, uh, projects in Sergipe, they are uh, Vanderlei's projects. Uh, I, I, I put there one and two because one is the, the one that has already uh, uh, the one uh, 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 financed by CNPQ, uh, PQ, and then uh, uh, the other one that Vandalay is beginning now, and I'm contributing with both of them. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, Brazilian Canada Knowledge, knowledge Exchange. So uh, we are at this point here. Well, what I'm going to talk about is then prospective, in the sense that uh, uh, it is what I have in mind, what I've, what I've been thinking about doing uh, as a consequence of this uh, path. Uh, of the developments that, that my, my research uh, uh, has done and where I think I can go with it and how I think I can uh, fit in and contribute. And you see a question mark there because maybe I, not how I think, but can I uh, fit in and contribute with what I have in mind to what the, the, uh, our projects, all of them, uh, are? Uh, uh, Brazil Canada, Sergipe and Projeto Nacional. But we'll see. So, uh, currently then, uh, my idea is to begin work uh, 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 first uh, with the, still connected to teaching literature, but now uh, thinking about literature in English language teaching, uh, because that is the context in Brazil. Uh, I work uh, uh, at university with uh, pre-service teachers, and uh, as they're going to, to teach English, uh, they're not required to, and they usually do not uh, uh, work with literature in their practice when they become uh, teacher. So one, one thing that I want to, to open uh, uh, some space for investigation and for probably stimulating is this possibility of working with literary texts uh, in uh, 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 the, the classes that those uh, teachers, our pre-service teachers, may in the future uh, give. Uh, also, and this is close, to, this is what, where we come to what, what I'm going to talk about today, uh, I, I also want to go back, go back to literary studies per se, <laughs> because I've been dealing with uh, uh, education and, and teaching literature more than, of course, uh, uh, as a professor and teaching literature, I do that, but I haven't been doing research on that. So, uh, and, and my uh, uh, future research on, on uh, in literary studies, uh, thanks to what has been happening here, my contact with Diana, uh, the, the, the possibilities of, of the thesis, uh, I think now I see it in terms of post-colonial literature, uh, in the field of post-colonial literatures, and uh, methodologically, uh, I, I've been interested in autoethnography, which is what I'm going to, to uh, talk about today. So, uh, and why uh, autoethnography? What would be the reason for, and why, uh, why that choice? Uh, I think we, we have to think, first of all, uh, about the call for new epistemologies that is uh, one of the important themes of our uh, uh, academic concerns today, and particularly for this group, I think uh, it is one of the central issues, uh, to deal with the complexities, with the fluidity, 
uh, with the variety of processes, with the idea of difference, uh, with the plurality uh, of, of ways of knowing, uh, producing, distributing knowledge, both uh, in the academic world and uh, on other uh, uh, areas of, of, of society, uh, other social practices. But of course, we are concerned here with the uh, uh, academic world particularly, right? And uh, of course, we all know, and I, I don't think I have to uh, expand on that, but that has to do with the epistemological paradigm shift that uh, we are still uh, uh, um, in the process of, uh, that has to do with the crisis in modern science uh, uh, that comes from many different areas of study. Uh, myself, particularly, uh, I think that my uh, uh, path within this uh, uh, shift uh, has been through post-structuralism and post-colonialism, but these are not the only, of course, uh, uh, fields of study that, that have contributed to that shift, uh, this ongoing, ongoing shift. But still, we cannot forget that um, uh, although we are in this moment of change, uh, we can see, you know, I'm, I'm talking specifically about academic work in the academic world, uh, we can see a lot of uh, uh, continuity in terms of reproducing canonical genres, uh, and of course, uh, uh, it's not just a matter of style or, or, or of form, but those genres uh, advance the epistemic and the methodological constraints uh, of modernity because they have been developed, they have been uh, 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 perfected within uh, uh, the modern uh, uh, paradigm, paradigm. And here, just to uh, sort of uh, uh, corroborate what I'm saying, uh, I want to quote so, uh, Bovito da Sousa Santos when he says that uh, the recognition of the persistence of abyssal thinking is thus the condition sine qua non uh, to start thinking and acting beyond it. Uh, without such recognition, critical thinking will remain a derivative thinking that will go on reproducing the abyssal lines, no matter how anti-abyssal it will proclaim, it, pro proclaim itself. It involves a radical break with modern Western ways of thinking and acting. Uh, and it's just, uh, I think it's interesting the way uh, Lena was talking about, uh, using other language, but talking about this abyssal thinking, the way uh, mm -hmm. knowledge uh, 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 concentrates uh, power and produces uh, hegemonic relations of uh, 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 exploitation uh, 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 and uh, uh, unequal uh, power relations. Anyway, so uh, but let's talk about autobiography a little bit. Uh, what is it? Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's still very, um, I would say, unstable as a, a methodological uh, uh, approach. Uh, and I, I have to recognize that I have just experimented with it. So I, uh, like I said, this is a sketch, and this is a, a something that I intend to do, a project that I intend to develop. But anyway, I have already uh, uh, read, I think, enough to, to understand that uh, uh, what autobiography is, uh, it's still very much connected to the specific uh, area of study in which it is uh, produced. So you, you will find a, a, a variety of, of names. Uh, I just uh, uh, put some examples there. Interpretive biography, uh, reflexive ethnography, social poetics, confessional tales, radical empiricism, and then it goes uh, some, of, some of the terms are more uh, derogatory, some, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, the thing is that autobiography is still a, ve still a very uh, open concept, right? Uh, in this sense, though, so I want to define how I am uh, 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 working with, how I have worked with it, and again I have to, to, to stress that uh, I, I do not consider the work I have done uh, uh, an autoethnographic work uh, per se, but I have, like I said, experimented, sort of, uh, uh, I've been tempted to, to push a little bit uh, uh, in my PhD thesis, uh, uh, push, the, push the envelope a little bit, try not to, to uh, make the, the evaluators angry that much, <laughs> but just enough to uh, sort of refresh and try to experiment with new possibilities of uh, methodological work, and also, of course, new possibilities of meaning, uh, which in the end is what we are uh, uh, after. Anyway, so autoethnography uh, in very short and simple terms uh, will be somewhere uh, in, uh, uh, at the intersection of autobiography and ethnography. Uh, there's an age missing there. Anyway, um, and uh, 
being then autobiographical to some extent, or uh, necessarily, uh, it will include elements of narrative and of, liter uh, of literary uh, uh, work, of, of the literary genre. Uh, and of course, as ethnography, it is uh, 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 concerned with the description analysis of culture, of cultural phenomena. Uh, and uh, at the intersection of those two uh, 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 areas, those two approaches uh, to, to knowledge production, uh, we have autoethnographic work. So, it exposes the fictional and situated condi condition of every ethnography uh, by embracing the historicity of personal experience and narrativity. Uh, in the sense, uh, uh, I'm here uh, 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 agreeing with uh, uh, the idea that uh, uh, all, eth all ethnography is, uh, uh, in, in, in its limit, uh, it is fictional in the sense that it is a form of rep presenting through language and, in the sense, uh, reconstructing reality. Uh, so that, uh, through autoethnographic work that is exposed, uh, aiming at a more inclusive and organic apprehension and representation, representation of cultural phenomena as complex events. Uh, particularly, I'm taking the stance that uh, Kentelow takes uh, by calling it critical ontology. Uh, then as a way of uh, not only under understanding the world uh, and separating the world from the uh, 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 self that apprehends the world, but as uh, understanding one's being in the world as then a process of uh, 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 dialogue or a dialectical process in which both self and world uh, are defined uh, concurrently uh, within, within this process. So, uh, to me, specifically, uh, in the work that I have done in, the <coughs> in my thesis, uh, what is the value, uh, what, what was the purpose of using autoethnography? Uh, mm -hmm. I would say uh, uh, the choice then for this specific context, my work, uh, my recent work, uh, it had to do uh, with finding a uh, principle uh, a unifying principle, methodological princi principle that would uh, uh, run through uh, the, the praxis that I was uh, uh, studying, uh, teaching in uh, uh, teaching literature, uh, the methodology, and also uh, uh, the uh, notion of interpretation uh, with which I was working. So, in this sense, uh, I, I would say that I would call that principle literature. Uh, literature would be the organizing principle of my work on different levels. So the course content that I studied in my PhD thesis, uh, of course, it was a thesis on teaching literature. So the, the course content, content was literature, uh, particularly post-colonial. Uh, but I also want to see post-colonial as specially literary in that sense, in that sense that it, it, ne uh, uh, it uh, uh, textualizes the relationship between colonial and uh, 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 post-colonial uh, uh, systems of knowledge. It creates this, by presenting post-colonial text in itself, that relationship, be that relationship between the, the perspective that is dom dominant among the students that I had and the, new, the text presented is already a form of narrativization because it, his it creates that historicity, it creates that uh, opening up of a story just by using, uh, uh, by selecting that genre in those kinds of, uh, of texts. So there is literature in the course content that I was studying. There's literature in interpretation because uh, I'm not going to go back to my practices here, but anyway, uh, the way we were working was uh, to also uh, make the process of interpretation meaning making and to make it meaning making uh, meant to historicize it to textualize it. Uh, so the use of the blog was a way of uh, 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 breaking uh, down the immediacy of uh, 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 thinking and interpreting and transforming it into a collaborative, pro collaborative process that you can probably visually uh, uh, and, and, uh, see uh, when, if you read the, the, the blog discussion. So you can see the, the interpretation of a text also as a process that has been historicized 
that has been then subjected to some kind of literary quality in the sense that uh, uh, it's been recorded or registered as uh, uh, a process, right? Uh, and finally, of course, uh, there is literature in the method uh, uh, that I have, again, uh, uh, flirted with, which is uh, autoethnography. So, uh, autoethnography in my work in, uh, uh, is part of this uh, search for a unifying principle in which the principle of narr narrative, the principle of literature, I'm equating these things, they're not the same, but uh, I, I, I hope you know what I mean. Uh, the, but that principle becomes a uh, site for critical work. So the idea was to have a critical work in the presses, teaching literature, in, uh, but the critical work in my own production of the PhD thesis, and narrativizing it, <coughs> narr or textualizing it better, uh, would be a way of uh, 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 historicizing these processes, would, would be uh, 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 the unifying principle for, for that. Uh, I have here some examples of how I have experimented with it. Uh, I, did anybody set the time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think... Um, mm. not, not much. So not much. I'm not, not going to go through them, more. but <laughs> if you're curious, then I, I have some examples of how uh, 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 it was uh, done, uh, how it showed in the text that I wrote in my, my thesis, but I'm not going to go through that. So let's go uh, to the end. Uh, the idea then is uh, moving forward. Uh, uh, what do I see now, how, and how I can connect, how, how I can connect this to to the work in uh, uh, in our project. So first of all, uh, one of the things that I come uh, uh, that I bring from that experience uh, is the uh, problem of writing the other. Uh, in the end, as ethnographers, or even if we do something that is not pure ethnography, but is uh, the kind of study that we do. Uh, we are writing others. If we study classroom <coughs> practices, if we study uh, 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 students' uh, 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 participations in our, in our, uh, in, the, in the activities we we work, we propose. So, uh, and this is something that becomes then a problem for me at the moment. So, even if I was aiming at critical work in that sense, there's always the violence of writing the other, silencing as we uh, represent the other. Uh, so that question for me. Uh, uh, brings to my future work uh, uh, the uh, desire uh, not only to write the other but also to be written by the other and this is where the idea of collaboration in and I'm not talking about because the the classroom practices that we work uh, we were talking about were collaborative but I'm talking about collaboration in terms of uh, the production of uh, research of academic research writing collaboratively uh, in that sense then challenging uh, uh, the violence of representation. Uh, uh, the way I devise it in a, just an idea that I have now for a future project uh, is to, to um, work with collaborative autoethnographies in post-colonial studies. This is something that I want to start. It, ha it will have to start informally, uh, probably in November. I will invite students voluntarily to participate in that in my, at my university. Uh, hopefully, you can expand it and make it more. I mean, it can become a project of of uh, 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 maybe with some, some kind of funding and something like that, but that's for the future. The idea is to, to begin uh, this kind of work. Basically, in very, very uh, uh, simple terms, it would be having uh, a study group that will study autoethnography as methodology, will study uh, uh, post colonial theories, and will study literary texts. And the idea is to concentrate, or a literary text, a novel, for example, and to concentrate. Uh, 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 that, that process of studying these three things uh, uh, into uh, uh, as, as a process that will be uh, uh, registered through autoethnographic auto narratives. And in the end, but then you have an individual work of reading the text uh, or reading the text meetings, uh, individual work meetings, individual work meetings, and individual recording of autoethnographic work. Uh, of the process. And the resulting uh, uh, individual works will then be informed by the group work that uh, 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 will be taking place throughout uh, uh, that time. Uh, so I'm thinking about uh, autoethno uh, uh, autoethnographic literary studies in the end, uh, literary essays, literary, uh, that will sort of then be informed, of course, by individual participation in the group, but also be informed by the uh, 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 collaborative process of 
building that knowledge together about the method, about the theory, and about the, the work itself uh, in time. Uh, still sketchy, but anyway. Thinking about, and to finish, thinking about how I think this relates to, to, to Brazilian Canada Knowledge Exchange Project. Um, just as questions. Uh, the first one, uh, I'm just asking if my questions about <laughs> knowledge production would be questions of relevance to the group. Mm -hmm. So, how does the project respond to the contemporary call for new epistemologies, new methodologies? How we as a group uh, 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 may look for, are looking for, are we looking for uh, 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 answers to that? Uh, can, collaborative, transnational, can the collaborative and transnational configuration of the group translate into renewed genres of academic work? That's another question that I need. Uh, how do individual and group work integrate? That was a question that Bill asked today. How do we, how do we collaborate? Uh, and uh, think, thinking about uh, our own process of producing work collaboratively and individually, and how can we integrate that uh, more uh, uh, in a more articulate, uh, articulated, a better articulated manner? And can it, auto ethnography be of use to the purpose of this group? But these are the questions that I have then, and I, uh, I think I can pose to the group based on my interest. Wow. Okay.